The Smallpox Monster, A Tale of Triumph and Caution A hot second ago in history, smallpox killed at least 300 million people. Smallpox was an abusive monster that haunted humanity, returning over and over, wreaking havoc on societies. But how could varila, the virus behind smallpox, be so incredibly deadly for so long, and how did we manage to forget its horrors so quickly? In 2023, there are only two laboratories left where the living smallpox virus is officially stored for research, one in Koltsovo, Russia, and the other in Atlanta, USA. The question is, what could possibly go wrong? Let's imagine an unfortunate scenario where the virus escapes and infects you. Varila, the virus responsible for smallpox, is highly infectious and spreads through small droplets you breathe in. It immediately targets the cells lining your throat, causing chaos as it kills them. Why? To trick your body into providing it with transportation. When your body detects cell death, your immune cells rush to the site to help. Unfortunately, in this case, that backfires horribly. As immune cells clean up dead cells and combat infections, varila targets a crucial cell of your immune system, your dendritic cells. These intelligence cells gather information and seek reinforcements. They enter your lymphatic system, a vast network connecting immune bases across your body. Here, your heavy defenses activate, becoming the last line of defense against invaders. Varila, however, is determined to reach these bases. For about 12 days, the virus quietly infects both civilian and immune cells, spreading from one cell to another. Eventually, a critical threshold is reached, and Varila launches a full-scale attack. Millions of viruses exploit the lymphatic highway, infiltrating your blood and organs, spreading throughout your body. Despite this global assault, your adaptive immune system struggles to respond. Immune cells rely on interferons, critical transmitters that slow down virus infections and activate antiviral weapons. Varila, however, can deactivate interferons, crippling your defense system. It also manages to shut down other protective mechanisms, allowing it to spread unchecked, infecting billions of cells throughout your body. Among the infected are your capillaries, the smallest blood vessels, which die in large numbers. This triggers the arrival of neutrophils, normally efficient killers of invaders. However, they are ineffective against smallpox and worsen the situation by releasing harmful chemicals and causing inflammation. Your body develops a rash filled with pus and cellular debris, swelling with lesions covering your skin and even your organs, all teeming with billions of varila viruses. This marks the critical phase, as you fight for survival, experiencing a high fever, blood clotting, toxin buildup, and fluid in your lungs, making breathing increasingly difficult. There are two possible outcomes, either your immune system regains control, eliminating infected cells and gradually allowing you to recover with lifelong immunity, or you succumb to the infection, overwhelmed by your body's reaction. About a third of smallpox patients do not survive, and survivors often bear scars or suffer from vision or hearing loss. For thousands of years, smallpox terrorized humanity until we said, enough. Desperation led to variolation, a risky practice involving infecting individuals with a mild form of smallpox to confer immunity. Though risky, it offered some protection. A major breakthrough occurred when scientists realized they could use material from cowpox, a milder variant affecting cows, for vaccination. This marked the beginning of vaccination programs, one of humanity's greatest achievements. Despite facing numerous challenges and fighting tirelessly, it took nearly 200 years to eradicate smallpox. In 1980, smallpox was declared eradicated, marking a monumental victory.